you all know the way you love yourself is the way your parents lo loved you. Yes? So if your parents loved you in a way that split you in two, you're going to love yourself in a way that splits you in two. So I have narcissistic personality disorder. My, na my narcissistic parents split me, and now I love myself through a split. I live inside of this polarity, and those are the superego injunctions. When you enter my world, my way of loving you is the way I love myself. Love, in inverted commas, it's not real love. Love, relating, is through splitting. You're either altogether good or altogether bad. At the beginning of the narcissistic the abusive relationship, you are altogether good. You are idealized. At the end, you are altogether bad. You have been split, but you live inside of their world and they've split you. In order to continue relating to them, you now split yourself. Do you remember thinking that you had lost your mind, and gone crazy, and you're swinging between two states? It's painful, isn't it? Very painful to watch yourself start to fragment. You are split. You are split. And there's big implications for recovery. There's only one way out of this, and it's to reintegrate. So do you have memories of the narcissist doing nasty things to you? Yes. Do you have memories of pleasant experiences with the narcissist as well? Yes. yes. When someone says to you, or you say to yourself, this is a nasty person, what do you do? This is a bad person. Look at them, they're a piece of shit. They're abusive. Why don't you leave? You defend them. And that, my dear ones, is a narcissistic defense. You are narcissistically defending them. It's a narcissistic defense. Because if that message is correct, then you are wrong. And you become defiant. You become bullying of yourself. You start to bully yourself in the way that they do. It's a narcissistic defense. You defend them. You defend them. Now, there are reasons for that that we'll get into in the next section. But you have become split and your memories are split. What was that? Oh, your memories are now split. <laughs> so that you have them as good and bad and you're relating to them in a good, bad way. So you are split up. Now, they didn't do this consciously. Nobody can do this consciously to you. <laughs> It's just a really unfortunate side effect of the relating. You're trapped inside of a psychotic fantasy space with a person who has chosen psychosis as a way of life. And as a result of being trapped in that space over time, because they treat you as two different people and they show up as two different people, you become two different people. So there's a kind of a dissociative identity disorder here that we have to resolve in therapy. A pretty big job, but not impossible because it's not full-blown dissociative identity disorder. So they split reality and they split you and now you are split into uh, two different sections. And I claim that you start to store your memories uh, separately in two separate spaces because you couldn't stand to have them both in the same space. So in order to keep them split, whenever you have a thought where you're like, I think he's the same guy who cheated on me, the narcissistic defense kicks in and goes, no, but that was your fault. Because don't you remember, that's, that's what you made him do. That's what you made her do. You caused the abuse or, or whatever bullshit they've subjected you to. So we've split our own ego. And then uh, we have this cognitive dissonance. Now, the reason why I've put this up uh, is because it seems to me there's a bit of confusion about this. Cognitive dissonance is, the, is actually the experience of internal stress. It, it doesn't mean... Uh, so I, I see the way people use gaslighting, cognitive dissonance online and it seems to be adjacent to the real meaning of it. So cognitive dissonance, they seem to think, means just confusion. Um, it's got the word cognitive in it, but you should think of it as uh, somatic, not cerebral. If somebody has cognitive dissonance, they're experiencing a felt physical uh, stress that is the result of two contradictory pieces of information fighting. It is an internal fight. You see we're coming back to the same concept again and again, have idea one, an idea too, they can't exist in the same space. You can't be a good object and a bad object at the same time. You can't be, that's nonsensical. So a fight begins and as you fight and you try to resolve that, it creates cognitive dissonance, which is a huge amount of internal stress. Did any of you get sick after your narcissistic abusive relationship? Yeah, either massive weight gain, massive weight loss, uh, sleep problems, uh, immune, gastric, Immune system disorders. 
this will destroy you across time. You're not designed for this. It's too much. It's too much. And you never rest because the fight continues. And it's a fucking nightmare. It's a fucking hellscape. It's awful. And it's you with you. They've caused you to fight you. They're good. They're bad. No, they're, no, they're good. They love me. No, 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 they don't. They don't. No, they do. And you're trying to free yourself. They don't have to do any work at all. They could just go, oh, the idea is set. And they could just walk away. You could break up with them and 12 years later still be doing this. And you've remarried and they're dead even. They've, you know, they're not even on the planet anymore. It continues because the shared fantasy space, the shell, you're carrying it. You're carrying it. We've not destroyed it yet. I'll take questions in a minute. Um, I'll, I'll go through this fairly quickly and take questions because I know this is a weird one. When you're taking notes, whether you're a therapist or you're looking to overcome this, uh, write down the pain I experience is cognitive dissonance from split injunctions that are battling each other. Sorry. Also slightly not sorry also slightly necessary. The pain I experience is the cognitive dissonance from split superego injunctions fighting each other. 